Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It's Friday, the 29th day of October 2021. I do pray this finds you well this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. We turn tonight to the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 16th verse. And behold, a man came up to him, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious thrones, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. And that is the Gospel of the Lord. So the text this evening, the word of our Lord, begins with this young man, who, by the way, the great church historian Eusebius tells us is Mark. The, the evangelist Mark, who was a young man and a man of some means, his family was certainly the family that owned the upper room, which Jesus celebrated the, his last Passover with his disciples. And he was also Paul and Barnabas's, Barnabas's, Barnabas's traveling companion on a number of their missionary journeys, Mark. So this man, Mark, comes up to Jesus and he says, what must I do to have eternal life, which is the question we all have, you know. We don't want it to be over when we take our last breath in this life. And we all, I, you know, unless you meet a hardcore atheist, and they're out there, most people believe that there's something. Now, they're misguided very often in what they believe. We, we become angels. No, we don't, actually. Scripture doesn't teach that. They're a separate created order. Or uh, we just do more of this. We get to do our favorite things in heaven, which when you really sit down and think about that and think that through, you think that's going to be miserable. If you get to do your favorite things all the time, they're not going to be favorite very long. Uh, and then what about all the other people? What if your favorite thing, what if your favorite thing you know, goes up against you know, somebody else's favorite thing? Let's say your favorite thing is hunting you know, or, or fishing. I, that's a common one here. You're going to catch the, the biggest fish in heaven. Well, first of all, there's no death. So would it, would it just be catch and release? Uh, and what if, you're, uh, uh, would it, what if you're somebody who's really into the environmentalist movement and you know, we have to be vegetarians and those people have an argument? And I'm not a vegetarian, I'm not a vegan, but I understand the arguments that those people make, and I do think about them from time to time. Anyway, you know, would their perfect heaven be, you know, nobody gets to have fish. So you see what I mean? You know, this, this, we run afoul very quickly uh, when we think about what eternal life is going to be like, apart from what God says. And God actually doesn't say much, except it's going to be eternal. And it's going to be wonderful. And... We're not going to be angels. We are going to we're going to have bodies. Now, now there's that 
interim period before the general resurrection after our death where our soul goes to be with the Lord and it waits. Uh, uh, it's cognizant of that waiting. Uh, we hear about the souls praying and singing. But there will be a resurrection and we will ultimately be people uh, with flesh and blood but without the stain of sin and everything that comes along with that. So what it's going to be like, we can't really imagine. So God doesn't even give us the opportunity to ponder because I, you know, we just can't fathom it in our fallenness. And so uh, he's rather closed-lipped about it. Read scripture. You know, it's what he describes is highly symbolic. Uh, and in our fallen state, we think, well, that doesn't sound like fun, standing around a throne and singing all the time. You know, I mean, really, you know, people do think that way. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of that, you know. But those are just, those are symbolic of, you know, we're going to have this perfect fellowship with God. Our worship of him will be perfect. And we do know it's going to be wonderful, like I said. He is going. He himself is going to wipe the tears from our eyes. So anyway, um, and there's a lot more we could say about that. Uh, that being, you know, we can think about it anyway. But, but okay. So the question, you know, what must I do to have eternal life? And notice what Jesus does. He he does this so frequently. That we often just sort of miss over. He 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 answers by beginning to ask questions. Why do you ask me about what is good? You know. Who's good? There's only one who is good. Now, this is where he is really trying to refocus not just this young man, but us. All right? Who's good? There's only, now notice, there's only one who is good. Only one. That means it excludes this young man, it excludes you, it excludes me. This doesn't ring right away with this young man, Mark. Um, so, Jesus says, all right, you would enter life. Keep the commandments. And he says to him, notice what he says. This is what we do all the time. Well, which ones? You know, now, we maybe don't say it like that, but we like to parse them out. We like to ask the question, well, who's my neighbor? That's really the same question when you have the parable of the Good Samaritan. Uh, the question that launches into that parable is, well, who's my neighbor? You know, it's whoever God puts in front of you. That's who your neighbor is. Uh, not the people you like. Um, whoever, whomever, God puts in front of you. Uh, that's your neighbor at that particular moment. Yes, you know, and you don't get to wiggle out of that. So, uh, um, which commandments? Jesus, now notice Jesus focuses here on what we call the second table of the law, which is summarized, as Jesus says at the end, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, uh, That's how the, the, the Ten Commandments are summarized. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. The first tablet or table has to deal with our relationship with God. The second, which he brings up here, has to do with our relationship with his life. So he's omitted the most important ones because everything else flows really from the first commandment. We are not going to love our neighbor unless we understand how to love God and understand how God loves us. What right worship of God looks like on the Sabbath day, keeping it holy, and how not to take his name in vain, which is to submit to his commandments and to his good and holy will, among other things. So you shall not murder, you shall don't take your neighbor's life, you're not going to commit adultery, you're not going to take what doesn't belong to you. So the second table... And this man says, after he says, what do I have to do? And Jesus says, there's only one who's good. He has the audacity to say, see, it hasn't clicked in yet. Just like it doesn't really click in with us right away. I have kept all these. See, when we think about eternal life, and if you go to people who are not part of the church, this is what they think. You know, they think, oh, I have kept these commandments. You know, really failing to examine life. What they mean is they have kept the commandments they wanted to keep when it was convenient for them to keep them when they were going to get something in return. That is not keeping the commandments. You know, keep, loving your neighbor means loving your neighbor as yourself. You want the best for yourself. You want to improve yourself. You want, you, want to, you want to get over the things that you do wrong and not do them again. That's what it means to love yourself. And you want your neighbor to do the same thing. You, know, you want them to be better. You want them to be healthier. You want them to, to have better things. And you want them to not do things that are going to hurt themselves or hurt others. That's loving your neighbor. Um, so, notice what Jesus says. Okay, you want to be perfect? There's only one who is good now. Remember that. You go sell what you have. Give it to the poor. You, that's your neighbor, by the way. And come follow me. It's all right. You'll have your treasure in heaven. Don't you worry about it. You know. And the man goes away sorrowful, Mark, because he has great possessions. Now we know if this gets to him, he, he becomes the great uh, evangelist, Mark. Uh, not without his ups and downs like the rest of us. This doesn't happen in our lives overnight. Uh, you know, we spend a lifetime sorting these things out. So don't, you know, don't worry that you're not a super saint. Don't worry that you still struggle with these things. You're going to do it till the day you die. 
Um, that's one of the beautiful things about Holy Scripture is that it records our human faults and foibles and all their and all their ugly nakedness. Uh, the good things that happen, but the, the dumb things, the sinful things that we do, the very hurtful things that we do. So uh, the man goes away sad, but Jesus loves him. And that's why he tells him this is loving his neighbor. He tells him this truth about him. So the disciples say, you know, um, you know, you know, they start pondering over this. And Jesus says, you know, it's only with difficulty that a rich man can enter. He doesn't say a rich man can't enter. He says it's going to be difficult. Uh, and then he has this parabolic statement. It's easier to, for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And the, and the disciples are astonished. Like, well, who can be saved? And Jesus says, now the key of it all. With you, this is impossible. With us, but not with God. All things are possible with him. And then he goes on to say, you know, he's not saying, you know, I'm going to reward you in this life. He says, you know, when you just focus on me, it's all yours. You have eternal life. Um, you have the kingdom of heaven. You're an heir to everlasting life. You're an heir to the kingdom of heaven. You're grafted in. It's all yours. It's all yours. So don't worry about this world. He doesn't mean turn your back on your mother. He's just saying, you know, focus on Christ. Focus on Christ and all these other things fall into place. Whether we're blessed with wealth or that he takes that wealth away. Whether we give that wealth to our neighbors because they need it. Um, they're sick. And he's not saying take a vow of poverty and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it is, he's saying focus on him. All right. So very interesting text. Very rich text there. Let's go ahead and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as this work week has come to an end, we pray your blessing upon us this weekend as we prepare to receive the Blessed Sacrament, that we also may be able to get some rest and relaxation for those who must work throughout the weekend. We pray that they would also find time uh, to uh, rest and relax and enjoy their families. Uh, we ask you to be with those who work um, around the clock to keep us safe and to uh, protect us throughout tonight here and throughout the world, the law enforcement officials, first responders, and uh, members of the military. We ask you to protect them in their duties and allow them to return unharmed to those whom they love. Heavenly Father, as always, we ask you to be with those who are crying to you for healing. We pray for Dennis, and for these are all uh, Dennis's brother in Christ, and then for friends of our congregation, uh, Nicholas, Tony, Jason, Megan, Ke Kelly, Helen, all who cry out to you. Heavenly Father, Place your hand upon them according to your gracious will, keeping, ever, keeping them ever mindful of your love and your victory, even over death itself. And bless them with your peace. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And as I'm turning to the hymn, which is hymn number 763, When Peace Like a River, 
Uh, there was no youth group this Sunday. Uh, there's a conflict with most of the kids. It's, it is uh, all Hallow's Eve or Halloween, as our culture likes to say. And that is uh, uh, the hours of uh, kids are allowed to go out uh, by government decree to go out and uh, collect the sugary treats from you, trick-or-treat. Um, so uh, I mean, many of them already made plans to either be out with friends and stuff like that. So no youth group this week, um, but we'll meet uh, the first uh, Sunday again in November um, and again, be part of that. Also, I remind you, if you uh, enjoy these devotionals, uh, feel free to share them. You can, you can uh, uh, just, there's usually a little link down at the bottom. You click share, and, and other people will hopefully be blessed by uh, whatever efforts we make here. So this is hymn number 763, When Peace Like a River. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul, It is well with my soul, It is well, it is well with my soul. That stands a one of four of When Peace Like a River, hymn number 763. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed evening, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.